Welcome, my friends, it's the Helpful Dad. Again, continuing our series on gold and silver investing. Today, we're going to talk about junk silver. Is it really junk silver? What does it mean? We'll review the history of it and look at some various coins. Now, as always, I want to advise you that I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just telling you my personal opinion. If you agree that investing in gold and silver is right for you, then by all means, maybe you'll be interested in this video. I'd love to know what your comments are, so please share them with us. But let's get ready to talk about junk silver. So first and foremost, we want to come to the agreement that junk silver, quote unquote, is not junk. It actually has quite a lot of value to it. You may also hear it called 90% silver or 45% or 40% silver, something like that. But in general, you know, silver was actually in our coins for hundreds of years until 1965, and it was at least 90% silver. Then the price of silver started to increase and it started to approach the real value of what it was actually worth. So the government decided to replace the actual silver in the coins with pretty much worthless metal. And as a result of that, the American public was smart, so they started to hoard the coins that had silver in them. And that combi that hoarding combined with the fact that a lot of these silver coins were melted down in the 80s to produce other types of silver bars and things like that and other coins, um, they made these more scarce and therefore more desirable. So the great thing about 90% silver specifically is that it's one of the least expensive ways that you can actually buy silver and, and thus invest in silver. Sometimes it trades at just a very, very small premium over and above the spot price. Other times it's a slight discount. So if it ever happens like that and you believe silver is going to rise, you certainly want to jump on it then. Now we'll go through this in more detail as we move along through the actual uh, looking at the various coins. But in 1965, basically the government, the Congress decided to instruct the U.S. Mint to remove all silver from its quarters and dimes. And so silver content, well, they didn't remove all of it. It was just reduced to 40% instead of 90%. So this, the Kennedy half dollars from 65 to 69 basically only had 40% silver then instead of the previous 90%. And then it was 60% copper. Then after 69, pretty much all coins just had copper and nickel, except for a slight period in 71 to 76 where you saw an Eisenhower dollar, which I'll show you, that had a 40% silver in it as well, too. So with that being said, let's just, again, go back to looking at this bags of junk silver, how to own it, what the, is, does the condition even matter, things of that nature, and then we'll look at the individual coins, okay? So as we said, you know, with silver, generally you're going to buy you're probably going to look for 90% silver and you're going to look to buy it in what we call 90% bags. So a bag of coins is going to be, uh, you, you're going to see it based on the face value. So let's say you have four quarters, uh, four quarters together would be one dollar, it would be a dollar face bag. And then the actual silver content of that would be dependent again on, on what types of coins are in there. So you can get a mixed bag of coins or all the same coins, something of that nature. You can get one dollar bags, ten dollar bags, five hundred dollar bags, a thousand dollar bags. I'll just be very expensive. But in a one dollar bag of 90% coins, you're going to have 0.715 ounces of silver. So let's say silver is $32 an ounce or something like that, then 0.715 of that means the actual silver value of that bag would be $25. Does that make sense? Take the silver spot price, times it by the value of silver in the bag, and that would give you the value of the actual silver. And then you have a, maybe a slight premium that you'd pay on top of that to the coin dealer. Okay, so you also want to look at, you know, again, if you're collecting specific coins, you're going to want, like I said, a, a bag or a roll of just those specific coins, or you can just get a mixed bag. Again, it depends on what you're buying it for. Um, also, does condition matter? Again, that depends on what you're buying it for. If you're collecting, you know, barber dimes and you want them to have a very good condition, then you're going to want to, you're probably going to have to pay more. Otherwise, you're going to look at just the circulated ones or, you know, good conditions or, you know, something like that. And then if you just only care about the silver melt value, you could even get calls, which is the worst condition of all, but you're just caring about the silver, so that's all that really matters. Also, the various dates are sometimes important. Again, if you're a collector, some dates are more important than others. Same thing with the minting locations. Some of the certain mint uh, are more important than others if you're a collector. But if you're just like me and you only care about the silver content, you just you know like to look at you know the different designs once in a while, but you don't want to pay for it, then just look for you know a good condition coin, um, you know, and you don't really care about the dates or where it was minted at or anything like that. And you want to pay a low premium. So all that being said, you know, that's, you know, kind of how you would buy it. Now let's look at the individual coins and some of the history behind it, and then we'll go from there. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is actually not a 90% coin, 
but a 35% silver coin, and these are war nickels. These were produced from 1942 to 1945 during the war, the, the World War II, and uh, they actually are worth some money. Each one of these coins is, is has 0 0.0563 ounces of silver in it, and let's say the spot price of silver is $32. That means each each of these nickels is worth about $1.80. So again, they're not junk. They should be held on to. After that, we're going to turn to the Kennedy halves that were produced from 65 to 69. These have, like I said, 40% silver in them, okay, 60% copper, but they are worth some money. Each of the Kennedy halves from 45, to, from sorry, from 65 to 69 has 0.1479 ounces of silver in it, and each one is worth, you know, if silver is worth, again, everything's going to be silver valued at $32 for the purposes of this discussion, so if that's a spot price of silver, these Kennedy halves would be worth about 475 for each one. That's pretty good value, right? Okay, next is the Eisenhower dollar. This is a 40% coin. It was produced from 71 to 76. It has 0 0.3161 ounces of silver in it, which makes each one of these worth about 10 bucks. So again, not junk by any means. Okay, those were all of the non-90% silver coins. Now we're going to turn to our 90% silver coins. We're going to start with looking at the dimes, the quarters, the halves, and then the dollars. So we're going to brush through this very quickly. You know, the dimes, they started with the Barber dimes. They were produced from 80, I'm sorry, 1892 to 1915. And like the other dimes I'm going to show you, they all have 0 0.0723 ounces of silver in them, which makes each one worth about $2.30 or so. Okay. And what I like about these older coins is they have, you know, the designs on them that, you know, I grew up in the 70s and beyond, and, you know, we didn't really see or pay attention to coins like this. So there's a lot of neat things that are here that if you can get them for a very low premium, they're kind of cool to have. So after the Barber dimes came the Mercury dimes, and these were produced in the 1930s and 1940s. And then after that, you have the Roosevelt dimes, which came from 1946 to 1964. Again, 1964, there's that key date when they started to take the 90% silver out of them. But the Roosevelt dimes, you know, from the pre-1964 are worth, again, $2.32 each. So that's pretty good. Okay, now we'll turn to the quarters. And again, you have the Barber quarters, the first one, 1892 to 1916. Each one of these quarters that I'm going to show you has 0 0.1808 ounces of silver in them. So again, if silver is $32 an ounce, you're looking at almost a $6 coin right there for each one. And then after the Barber quarters, you come to another design. Okay, and next we turn from the Barber Quarters to the Standing Liberty Quarters. These are very cool. You've got the Statue of Liberty actually standing up. That's why it's got the name. These are produced from 1916 to 1931. And again, each one of these coins is worth about $5.81. Then we turn to the Washington Quarters, produced from 1932 to 1964. Most of us have seen these um, at some point or other. And again, there's 90% silver content in these, so they're worth about $6 a coin. So those are your quarters. And next we're going to turn to the half dollars. Okay, so again, we start with the half dollars with the Barber half dollars produced from 1892 to 1915. Each one of these halves that I'm going to show you, these 50 cent pieces, has 0.3617 ounces of silver in them. So they're now worth about uh, $11.60 a coin. Good stuff, right? So after the Barber half dollars, you have the Walking Liberty half dollars. So that's the Statue of Liberty walking. That's why it's called the Walking Liberty half. From 1916 all the way to 1947. And again, each one of these, if you see them, worth about $12 a coin or more, depending on what the premium is, because they're an older coin. They could have a higher premium. And then you can turn to the Franklin uh, halves. These are one of my favorites. I, I'm a big fan of Brent Franklin. I always loved this coin when I saw it. These were produced from 48 to 63. And again, the silver content alone, they're worth about $12 a coin. After Franklin, for one year in 1964, you had a, a one-year 90% silver Kennedy half dollar. Most of the Kennedy half dollars you're going to see were going to be those 40% ones or those, or those worthless ones. But 1964 Kennedys had 90% silver content in them, so they're worth about $12, just the silver content alone. So those are your half dollars. And then finally, let's turn to some of the dollars. So the first one you have is the Morgan dollar, produced from 1978 to 1904. This, along with the peace dollar, I'm going to show you, have 0.7735 ounces of silver content in them. So the silver alone is worth about $25 each one of these coins, but you're going to generally see a premium. You're also going to see probably low, worse condition as well, too. This is the peace dollar, produced from 1922 to 1935. Again, each one is worth about uh, $25 a coin, and you can see it has the eagle on the back right there, which is kind of cool. So very... 
again, the whole point is that junk silver is not junk by any means. It is definitely worth owning, and particularly, you know, if you can get it for a good price. You know, you know, the one final thing I'll say about this is, you know, over the years, a lot of people have uh, started to buy silver because they think if there's a collapse in the United States um, dollar or some kind of a financial disaster, and we either we go back to the, a gold or a gold and silver standard, or just if we, you know, paper value money is not worth anything anymore, you know, these silver coins are going to be a very easy way to trade because they're very small size, they have a low, you know, low value, and they're very easy easy in terms of liquidity, so to speak. So there is value in owning junk silver uh, in terms of a financial disaster or just in terms of protecting your purchasing power. If you believe that silver is a good investment and you don't want to pay high premiums like you'd have to pay, you know, three or four dollars a coin to get one silver eagle or something like that, you know, look at these junk silver coins and you may find that you can get a lot for your money. So um, there you go. I'd love to know what your comments are. Please share them with us. And until next time, this is a helpful dad saying thanks and God bless you.